today, uh, Will's going to take his bed off to try and fix a little problem he's had with his uh, S10 pickup. It's a 2001 model S10 pickup. He's had a check engine light to keep popping on and off, and it keeps saying it's a P0440. Uh, P0440 on the little uh, torque app uh, to check your check your uh, trouble codes. Uh, it says it's a uh, it's saying, pressure. It's say, what it's saying is there's not enough pressure in the tank to get to kick the evap system on, and so it throws the code, and shuts the entire evap system down. So, Will has traced this down to a solenoid and little module that's mounted underneath the truck bed uh, on the back of the frame back here. And we've ordered a new one from Amazon. Uh, took a couple days to get it in. And uh, he's gonna put it on, see if we can get that fixed. Get the bed off, let's go. You said that code is P0440? Zero. So this is a uh, 2001 Chevrolet S10 two-wheel drive extended cab. It has the uh, 2.2 liter four-cylinder four-cylinder eco. It's not an eco boost. It, not eco boost. It was a uh, eco tech or Ecotech, something like yes. that. Uh, we've rebuilt the motor in this truck. Engine. I'm sorry. That's right. Will's here. I got to say engine. We've rebuilt the engine in this truck. Uh, truck's been running for, I guess we've had it for about a year. Hmm. Engine we, engine got rebuilt October 29th of last year. It was almost yeah. done on the engine stand. So it's been almost a year since we rebuilt the engine. Yep. And explain to us what this little thing is, Will. All right. So with this, this little solenoid right here, what it does is whenever your purge solenoid tells the system it's okay, we can finally kick on the EVAP system, suck the fumes into the engine, it opens this solenoid here which allows fresh air through this hose into the charcoal canister and it allows all, that, all the uh, fumes to go up into the engine, it sucks them right up into the engine. Uh, so this is just what allows that suction to finally flow through the, through the pipe up to the engine. And what this one's doing, it's not working 100% of the time. It's, uh, it will come on occasionally, and there's times where it won't come on at all. And it's sporadic, and it's causing the code to pop up saying that it's not building enough pressure to kick the system off. So it's basically staying open all the time. Yes. And before, this valve was partially open. Okay. And I got it to stick up. Well, where's the new one? The new one. 
Christmas. The old one's not going to get any better. No, it's not. That's, that's so true. That's why so we bought a new one. Yeah. Mm. And this one, pull the valve out of here. You can take a look through it, and you can't see air through the other side of it. Unlike that one, where as soon as you look at it, you can see through the other side and see open air on the other side. So you take it, hook this hose back up to it. Push it back here. Take your little connector and hook it back up. Right there. It's good to go. Alright. And you don't have to take the bed off to change this. Uh, Will had taken the bed off this past weekend trying to figure out what the problem was when we located the problem. Uh, he just went ahead and left stuff unhooked so that when we got the part in, we could take the just take the bed right back off real quick. Uh, he just undid the mounting bolts and the lights, uh, and it came off. It literally took him, I don't know, maybe five to ten minutes to get it unhooked and off. Uh, but you don't have to take the bed off to do this. You can do this from underneath. There's plenty of room to reach up in there and do that. Is that the standard part number that's on that? Uh, I believe so. All right, well, let's see. let's see if it cleared itself. Or if it's just... I don't know if it's going to clear itself right away. It might have to go through an entire drive cycle. Might have to drive it. Okay. Which is possible. It is possible. But yeah, that's another... When, when I cleared that code by accident the first time, it hasn't popped up since. So. Let's hope that fixes it. Maybe by the I time. Can feel air sucking through it. You couldn't do that before. Yeah. Well, let's hope that fixes it. Maybe by the time you get back to school, we'll know. Yep. Yeah. All right. So this is this is Will's truck. That's what he's been running back and forth to college with. Good little truck. It's only got about 140,000 miles on it. 150. Okay. Okay. He's uh he's been putting the miles on it. He's got nearly 150,000 miles on it. Hopefully, replacing this will uh, help with the uh, fuel mileage a little bit. One of the things that he did was he put a new uh, gas cap on it. That didn't fix it. And then you read about online something about a seal. There was some sort of seal supposedly in between here, uh, in between right here. I don't see one. Though. But there's not one here. Uh, this is all one piece. You have uh, this hose down here, but this isn't leaking. This metal pipe here, this is all one piece. It doesn't come apart. There must be some models that do come apart for some reason, but this one doesn't because uh, there's nothing to take apart. The what From what Will was reading, it was almost like it was a sandwich deal. You take it apart, you put a new bead of silicone on it, and squish it back together. Uh, uh, yeah, like a little flange that went together, but this one doesn't do that. So we've replaced hoses, little vacuum hoses in the front for the EVAP system. The secondary air pump. And we're hoping that that's going to be the fix to it. Will's got to put the bed back on now. He can get back to school. Oh, I was going to show you. This is the part. Bought a. It's a standard CP422. I bought it on Amazon. I think it was uh, twenty dollars. All right, let's get the bed on. Hey, 
Hey, Dixie. How you doing, baby? I think that chain's probably throwing it off. That's good. The first time I picked it up, I picked it up straight. All right, so Will's got the new part on his S10. He's going to take it and drive it uh, for a couple of days and see if the uh, check engine light goes away on its own. Uh, hopefully it will after, what is it, like 70 miles or something I like that? I said 75 to 80. Yeah, something like that. Uh, uh, you want it to go, go away on its own. You don't want to reset it. We could just reset it. We can reset it with a torque app, right? Hey, I already reset it. Oh, okay. Never mind. He already reset it. Uh, it just has to run on a complete drive cycle before it knows if that EVAP system is good to go or not. Okay. All right. Hopefully it will be. Uh, if it is, Friday we're going to take it and get it inspected so we can get it registered. Uh, or Saturday. Friday or Saturday. It just depends on when Will comes back. It depends on what Will's schedule is. Will I'll be back Friday night, but it's whether or not my job keeps me or not. Will has a full schedule all the time. Though. I have a job that keeps me over because they don't have enough people to deliver tractors. Will, Which is going to change here pretty soon because they hired someone to deliver tractors and wash tractors. Well, that's good. Will doesn't work a whole lot of hours because he's back in school. Uh, and he's actually closer to his dealership when he's at school than he is here at the house. So uh, he does work some during the week and on Saturdays. I'm a whole five minutes closer. Five minutes closer? I'm five, no. min I'm five minutes closer, but I'm like five miles further. Okay, that doesn't make any sense, but okay. I drive mo most of the time I drive is on the highway. 75 mile an hour. Okay. Most of the time I drive here is 35 mile an hour. Oh, because all the back roads. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, hopefully this is going to fix it. If not, then the next item that we are going to check into is the, the pressure sensor inside the tank. Pressure sensor inside the tank. Since it actually it mounts up on top uh, of where, the fuel pump where the fuel pump is on the tank. It's not hard to get to. Since I don't have a fancy diagnostics reader, I can't tell what is functioning properly and what is out of range so I don't know what to look at first. And okay, so while we watch Dixie here a little bit, I'll, I'll give an update on uh, the fix. So the fix that Will did to this has completely cleared this engine code. Will's put a couple hundred miles on it. Um, since this repair, the engine code has was cleared by him using the torque app. It has not came back on. And the one benefit that Will has gotten out of this truck is he, this truck has never gotten the gas mileage that it should have gotten. It's only gotten anywhere from 17 to 22 miles to the gallon. Now, it is an automatic, not a standard, but this truck should do 25, 27 miles to the gallon. He is currently getting that 25 to 27 miles to the gallon since he has replaced this little uh, EVAP solenoid. So this was the fix. I, Will had told me that there was 14 different problems listed under the code P0440. Evidently it's contagious to GM vehicles because my 03 Silverado threw a check engine light after he fixed this and the check engine light is for the exact same little EVAP solenoid uh, on my truck. Now it's a different part, I had to order a different part, but uh, my code actually specifically listed that. But Thanks for watching. Bye, Dixie.